In this Maya animation tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up the render settings so you can export a sequence of images rather than just a single still image. Previously, I set up this animation scene and then added just a bit of camera motion. Now I want to export the scene, but first I need to set up the render settings. I'm going to stop the animation. To get to the render settings, you can click the little gear icon up in the rendering shelf. This brings up the rendering settings menu. On the rendering settings menu, you can select which renderer you're going to use. For this demonstration, I'm going to use the Arnold renderer. Then there are a few tabs, common, which is for all renderers. Then there are some specific settings for the Arnold renderer. First, let's look at the common tab. Here we can set up our file name prefix. There are different values you can set in here. For example, this is going to have the scene name. We can also put the file version, the camera name, and different things that will help us identify our images. We can choose an image format. I'm going to choose EXR. Next, if we're going to export a sequence of images rather than a single frame, we need to change this. If you leave it on single frame, it will not export an image sequence. I recommend selecting name underscore hashtag dot ext. Then we got to select the frame range. I'm going to start on frame one and end on frame 50. We can also choose to skip existing frames. This is helpful if you have a render intensive animation, so we can choose which ones we want. Here I have two cameras. I made my camera one renderable in addition to the default perspective camera. Both these are now renderable. We can choose what aspect ratio we want. For test renders, HD 540 is pretty good. Then later when you're happy with your animation, you can pick HD 1080 or the size of your choice. I'm going to leave it at HD 540 for now. This will give us our resolution. Then we need to select the Arnold renderer. Here this first value exponentially increases all these values. So really this is three times three or nine. You can see that at the top here. And then each of these becomes 3 times 9, 18, and then 36. And then down here, it becomes 180. So these numbers increase very quickly. So if I change this to 4, notice now we're at 320. This will give us a much better render, but be careful. It can really start to take time to render your output. Now that I've set up the common side to be able to export an image sequence, I'm going to close the render settings. Then I can open up the render view. The render view defaults to the Arnold renderer and it will render whatever camera you had selected. In this case, it's rendering the perspective camera. We don't want to render the perspective camera. We want to render camera one. So I will select render, then render sequence and click the little box. Instead of the current camera perspective, I want to select camera one. Next, I need to choose where I want to save my files. By default, it will save the images in the images folder of your project in the temporary directory. I don't want to save them there, I want to specify a specific folder. So I'll click on this folder. It automatically goes to the images folder of your project. Here is the temporary folder. I'm going to click the button at the top to make a new folder, and I'm going to call this folder camera one. You need to double click the folder to be inside it. If you don't click to go inside the folder, it will not save your images there. Now I'll click select. Here it has the path that I need. Then I'm going to click render sequence. So now it will go through and render every frame of the animation. It will save these as numbered EXR files or the file of your choice in the folder. Once this is done, we will have a sequence of images that we can then make into a video. In the next video, I'll show you how to import these images as an image sequence into Adobe Premiere and then export a video of your animation.